After teasing us with short little trailer peeks of its Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro, Google's finally ready to fully unveil its flagship phones with us. And honestly, there are a few things that, based on a brief hands-on with them, I am already very excited for about the new Pixel series. As per usual, because they're Google phones, they come with some camera updates, some AI software and magic, as well as the typical performance enhancements that we get every year. But this year, Google is actually introducing a new hardware component to the Pixel 8 Pro that could make things a little more cool. And as the rumors uh, sort of speculated on, yes, the Pixel 8 does start at $699, which is $100 more than the Pixel 7, while the Pixel 8 Pro starts at $999. Both phones come with the new Tensor G3 chip, as well as a bunch of new Google Assistant updates that make the phones ostensibly smarter for you. So maybe that price differential is worth the money? I won't know yet until I get to fully review a unit for myself, but in the meantime, here are my early impressions of the Pixel 8 series. Let's start really quickly with the Pixel 8 because for me the most interesting thing here is its size. It's gone from a 6.3-ish inch screen on the Pixel 7 down to a 6.2 uh, inch on the Pixel 8. Not only that, the display can actually refresh it up to 120Hz now, up from the 90Hz before. And as the rumors suggested, we're getting up to 7 years of software and security updates, which is a first in the industry. Well, that's true across both phones, but I want to focus now on the Pixel 8 Pro because that thing has a new sensor that I'm really excited by. I am talking about, of course, the rumored temperature sensor that's sitting there on the back on the camera bar. Basically, with this, you can use your Pixel 8 Pro to sort of get about an inch or two inches away from things and measure their surface temperature. Now, at Google's demo, I used this on a cup of ice water as well as a warm cup of coffee. Google did caution that I should try not to um, use the temperature sensor or to get a reading when there's steam coming out of something. So you should be aware that that might get in the way of your readings. Of course, just as you would using any thermometer, really, measuring the temperature of things like liquids can give you inconsistent readings, but you know, usually within two degrees of each other. And that's the experience I had basically with the Pixel 8 Pro. I, I kind of tried to get the camera bar as close to the surface of the water as I could, and the readings sometimes were close to freezing or just slightly more. Whereas with the cup of coffee, it was similar. I would get 97 degrees or sometimes less. It really depends on where you're pointing, and as long as you can get that experience consistent for yourself, you'll probably figure out how to use it. It was also nice to see it didn't take long for the Pixel 8 Pro to deliver the readings. Honestly, I just hovered the temperature sensor over the thing and then pressed a button, and within a split second, it delivered a reading. Moving on to other sensors on the Pixel 8 Pro, and this time we're talking about camera sensors. On the rear of the Pixel 8 Pro, we've got a 50 megapixel main camera with an f1.6 8 aperture, which is pretty big, um, as well as a 48 megapixel ultra wide and a 48 megapixel telephoto that can provide up to five times optical zoom. Now with Google's Super Res Zoom, that can get you up to 30 times uh, up close to a subject using a combination of digital and optical, which is a little bit more than Apple provides with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. But what's more interesting to me than just the hardware alone is Google's software. For one thing, the company has redesigned its camera app, so all of the still image features are now in a photo tab, and all of your video recording features are in the video tab. You'll also get easier access to manual controls for things like brightness, contrast, white balance, and more. There's also a new macro mode that lets you get a lot closer to subjects. So on the Pixel 8, this is new, and on the Pixel 8 Pro, you can get a lot closer, just up to uh, under two centimeters away from something and still have it be in focus. Google's also touting some of its software magic in video editing this year. It's introducing a video boost feature that won't be available at launch, but we got a demo here at the event. And basically, what happens is a video you take that you decide to turn on video boost for will be sent to the cloud and uses Google's cloud-based processing to do things like HDR every frame or enable night sight video. In an undisclosed amount of time, and it's not clear how long it'll take yet, you'll be sent back a video through Google Photos that's been processed by Google's algorithms. Again, not something I can engage just based on the demos that Google provided, and it is something we'll have to test in the real world to see A, how long they'll take, and B, if they're even gonna be worth the wait. 
Some new software features coming to the cameras or photography on the Pixel 8 Pro include Best Take, which we've sort of seen a version of before where you can choose the best of all the pictures, but now Google's able to pick the best picture for each person in the scene and then compose them into the same image. So you'll have everyone's best face in one picture. You can even go back and choose after the fact which picture you want on each person's face. There's also a new feature called Audio Magic Eraser, which will help you eliminate some background noise. In the demo, we saw uh, an example of someone recording a musician on the street, and they were able to eliminate or reduce some passing traffic noise and bring the music more in focus. Finally, we already saw this at Google I.O., but Magic Editor, which allows you to outline subjects and get rid of unwanted background distractions and move your subjects or make them bigger or just make it seem like your kid's really dunking into the basketball hoop. That's coming to the Pixel 8s as well. Another area that Google tends to focus on is AI by way of its assistant. And this year, we're seeing generative AI, things that we've seen first on Bard or ChatGPT-esque features, make their way to the Pixel 8 Pro and Pixel 8. Now when you're scrolling a website or looking at a recipe online, you can ask the assistant to summarize the page for you. You can also ask the assistant to read the article aloud or translate it into a different language. It's not only a nifty feature for when you don't have time to read, it could also be a really helpful accessibility feature. Assistant voice typing has been upgraded to now be twice as fast and support two languages at once. So for someone like me, I can have a language be composed in both Mandarin and English at once without having to go first into the dictionary and then changing up the language in there. So I can send a message just by my voice to say my mom going, Hey mom, what's the English word for chao guo tiao again? And have the assistant do that seamlessly. Again, based on the little demos I had at the hands-on event, a lot of these features work surprisingly well. I was also able to check out another feature that is going to come uh, eventually, but not yet available at launch, which is Recorder Summaries. Now the Recorder app, if you're familiar, is one of the best transcription apps there is, and it is on-device transcribed by uh, Google's own AI. It was already good at providing real-time uh, transcriptions of what was being said, but now it will also allow you to go back into your recorded transcripts and get sort of a bullet point summary of what that interview or what that call was about. One other feature that to me set Pixel phones apart from the competition was call screening. Now, Apple may have found a way to sort of mimic that experience with this new live voicemail feature in iOS 17, but Google continues to do it the better way, and this time, we're seeing more improvements to this feature. Not only can Google Assistant now detect and filter out even more spam calls than before, it also allows you to have a more of a conversation with your caller because the Assistant is better at understanding what the caller has said and will give you more relevant prompts to respond with. Now this is obviously something I had to put through more of a real world test with real people calling to see how well it works, um, but I will say I'm already pretty impressed. This is something that you don't really think that you can do, but it is based on Google's duplex technology that enables the robot on the other end to sound like human talking to whoever's calling you so they don't just give up and hang up. And speaking of calling, you've also got Google's clear calling technology that reduces background noise not only on your end, but also on your caller's end so you can hear each other more clearly. All right, so as detailed as that was, that was still kind of just a high level overview of what's going to be new about the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro. I will shout out at this point that there is an update for Face Unlock. It is now meeting Google's internal security standards, so it can be used for authenticating things in apps like payments, for example. As I mentioned earlier, the Pixel 8 starts at $699. It'll be available in colors Hazel, Rose, and Obsidian. The Pixel 8 Pro starts at $999 and will come in Bay, which is kind of like a blue porcelain and obsidian, which is just fancy names for white and black. Now, if you're already excited, you can pre-order them and we have a post on Engadget.com telling you about all the deals if you pre-order now. So for all of that, make sure to come back to Engadget.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we will also be bringing you all the best news out of the world of consumer technology. Until next time, you don't need a temperature sensor to know, stay chill.